Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make a Happy Cat Tie-Dye Rack Dye Geode. I made a Muck Dye Geode shirt not too long ago using all the Happy Cat Tie-Dyes that I own. And it was a lot. So I had several viewers say, I wonder what it would look like if it was rack dyed. So I thought, well, let's try that. I'm not going to use absolutely every color though. And this time I'm going to use a tank top. I'm finding a place on the tank top where I'd like to start my first geode, pinching that area, and then I'm going to slide my hand down to where I want the very bottom of the geode to be, or the outer rings. I'm going to start tying my sinew lines from the outer portion of the geode in toward the center of the geode. I'm varying the distance between my lines, and I'm also going to vary the size of each of the geodes. I want it to look more random, so as much variation as I can do, the better. When I get toward the center of the geode, I'm going to really mess with that fabric. I'm going to kind of push it down inside, um, rough it up a little bit. Truly, the messier, the better. Part of my geode centers, too, I'm going to go ahead and split. I'm doing that with this one. I'm just taking the sinew down through the middle of the fabric, and that's going to divide my center into two areas. I'm going to tie each one of them independently and then I'm going to move on and begin tying another geode. Because this is a tank top and I don't really have sleeves, I'm just going to kind of bunch up the little sleeve or shoulder portion of the tank top and incorporate it into one of my geodes. If you'll notice, I'm not trying to smooth anything out. I'm actually kind of trying to get some wrinkles and rough areas into my geodes. The more the fabric folds in on itself and is messy, the more natural the geodes look because they have really strange shapes and unusual little areas in the geode. The key to making a really cool looking geode is literally not to make it perfect. You want to make it as random as possible and you want to make it look the least like a bullseye as possible. That's the reason why I start from the bottom. If you start from the center of the geode and work your way out to the outer rings, it's really easy to smooth your fabric down as you're going and you're tying your sinew. And before you know it, your geode looks like a bullseye. When you start from the outer rings and you're tying in toward the center, you kind of mess the fabric up a little bit. Say, pull at it, tug at it, poke it in, fold it over. Do whatever you want to do just to make it more wrinkled and messy. Okay, I'm going to keep tying the geodes. And once I have all the geodes that I can fit on my tank top, I'm going to go ahead and put a few sinew lines in between all the geodes. While I'm doing that, I take an opportunity to kind of push the geodes down so that it makes the shirt a little bit flatter and easier to apply the dye to. It also gives a few definition lines in that area in between the geodes. I've sped this video up just a little bit, but if you'd like to watch it at real time, you can click the settings icon on YouTube and choose the playback speed. You can either speed up or slow down the video. It's going to change my voice, but it will allow you to watch the video at whatever speed is comfortable for you.
Okay, now I'm going to place this shirt aside and allow it to dry out. I like to dye geodes when they're completely dry. And if you'd like a little bit more information about that, I have a link down below in the description for this video to my website. And I have a blog post on my website which addresses this topic in a little bit more detail. Basically, I think I get better color saturation when the geode is totally dry. Okay, so instead of actually rack dyeing this one, I'm going to dye it down inside of a colander, which will allow all of the runoff or the muck to drain away from the shirt. So it's basically like a rack dyed shirt. I'm going to place the ice over the top of the shirt, and then I'm going to place the dye on top of the ice. I don't know about anybody else, but every time I go to Whole Foods and I get the ice to go on top of my refrigerated items, I take those little baggies of ice and stick them in the freezer to use them on tie dye. So I'm out of the big bags of ice today and I'm using up all my little bags of ice from Whole Foods. I've tried to break them up, but they've been sitting in there a while and they're pretty solid. This time I tried to stick to only like purplish and blue tones of the Happy Cat tie dye. So I'm starting with Mystic Blue and I'm gonna place the dye in stripes on the ice. Then I'm going to use Almondine, Hurricane Bay, Strawberry Skies, Ice Storm, Raspberry Mist, Arcane Eye, and I'm going to add one more stripe of the Hurricane Bay. If you're not familiar with Happy Cat Dyes, it is a small business that is owned by Amanda and she mixes these dyes to use specifically for ice dye. I haven't really used them for liquid dye. I mean, I don't see why you couldn't, but they have really great color splits. So I purchased them specifically for ice dyeing. I have a link down below in the description that lists all of the colors and a link to her website where you can purchase some of the dyes. Now I'm gonna add an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top and put this container aside to allow the ice to melt. After the ice melted, I went ahead and laid a lid for another tub on top of this container and placed this container outside. I wanted to put it out in the heat so that it got nice and warm and to kind of speed up the bonding process. I left the shirt probably about 36 hours after all the ice melted before I started rinsing it. As you can see, it looks like I got really good color saturation on this shirt. I started rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I untied the shirt and I warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Instead of rinsing for a long time, I added some really hot water to my utility sink, a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent, and allowed the shirt to soak. When the water cooled off, I changed it out and I continued that soaking process until the water was remaining almost clear. Then I put the shirt along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. Now that the shirt's been washed, dried, and ironed, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one turned out looking really pretty. As much as I love the idea of using all my Happy Cat dyes on the last geode, I think this one turned out a little bit better. It's not quite as muddy looking. I've added a photo of that one alongside this one just so that you can kind of see the difference. So I really love this one. I think that the centers of all my geodes turned out looking really cool. And I like the colors on this shirt. I like the way they kind of mesh together, the color splits that come out of them. I am glad though that I only stuck with kind of the blue shades and kind of pinky purpley shades. I didn't add in any of the oranges or the greens like I did last time. But I still ended up with some kind of green colors and some other colors on this shirt from the color splits. So I think it's a really interesting shirt to look at. This tank top is a Port & Company brand tank top and it has side seams. When I laid the shirt out flat, I noticed that the seams were a little bit twisted. That's one of the reasons why I chose this design. Anytime you're using a shirt that has side seams, if 
the shirt is not absolutely perfect, meaning the seams lay flat and it's centered properly. You might need to choose a design like this one, one that you're not going to notice if that seam twists a little bit when the person's wearing the shirt. I've had that happen before with, I think it was a Bella canvas brand where I put a heart on the front and I lined the shirt up perfectly, but because of the twisted seams, it ended up looking weird when you put it on your body. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't use that brand a lot. I know that's a very popular brand and I know a lot of people love that brand. The shirts are nice, but those side seams can just really twist and make it difficult to tie dye them. This one, it wasn't twisted too bad, but you don't even notice it with a design like this. So you might keep that in mind whenever you're purchasing t-shirts. If it's a t-shirt that's got a side seam, just make sure it's not twisted before you begin to tie your design. For some reason, they put seams in a lot of women's style shirts. So overall, I love this shirt. I think it turned out really pretty and I'm really happy with it. But what do you guys think? Do you like it better than the one where I used all my Happy Cat dies? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.